Hey Maker, it's Charlotte, and I'm here today with Scylla, one of our amazing makers, and we're going to teach you how to make a pillar candle. So making a pillar candle might seem a little bit tricky at first, yeah. Scylla can tell you, but uh, it's not as hard as it looks and it's actually a lot of fun. So we're gonna show you a little bit behind the scenes of the fun, follow along, we'll walk you through all of our steps, and after this video, you will know how to make your very own pillar candle. Okay, so let's get started. So this is a silicone mold, so it's super stretchy. Yeah. Um, and there's different types of molds out there, but mm -hmm. while I'm wicking this, what's your favorite type of mold? The silicone for sure. Um, and I really like the naked body mold. Yeah. They're just so trendy. And Those so are cute. super trendy. Especially all the colors that you can make, like all different kinds of colors you can make them in. It's really cool. I love that. So, so that's my favorite. <laughs> okay, so you guys saw me, I just wicked this. So there's different types of wicks out there. So I'm using one that has a sustainer already at the bottom. You can also purchase spooled wick, which we mm -hmm. offer at Mixi. That's what Scylla uses. Um, but for this candle, I'm gonna use a wick with a sustainer, um, and I'll show you guys the technique behind that as well. So there's a hole that we poked in the bottom of this mold, and I simply strung the wick through the bottom. A quick tip is to kind of flip it inside out to make it easier to push the wick mm -hmm. through, and then I'm gonna use this super cool wick bar to make sure that my wick stays center. So, when you are making a candle that has a sustainer at the bottom and you're making a pillar candle, it's gonna be kind of a two-step process. So you'll wanna start by, you're gonna notice your sustainer needs to be a bit above the surface of your mold. And then after we've poured, we're gonna pull it through and we're gonna bring that sustainer below the bottom of the pillar. So when I'm done with this, this is actually gonna be the bottom and this is gonna be the top. We'll show you how that works. Okay. so. Next we need our wax. Mm -hmm. We're using a pillar wax today that we've heated in our handy dandy wax melter back here. But if you don't have a wax melter, you should get one because they make your life so much easier. You can melt your wax, you can walk away, you can make way more candles at one time. Totally worth the investment. So um, we're using our wax melter. We've already melted the wax and now we're gonna pour it out. So. Scylla, mm -hmm. I'm gonna assign you the fragrance and I'm gonna take the wax. You'll wanna use between six to at 10% most fragrance load for your candle, i.e. if you have a 10 ounce candle, then nine ounces need to be wax and one ounce needs to be fragrance. That's gonna give you a 10% fragrance load. So for this candle, we're using a little bit less than 10%. This is um, going to hold 11.6 ounces of total wax and fragrance. So I'm gonna measure out 10.6 ounces of wax and Scylla's gonna do my one ounce of fragrance. So why don't you smell that fragrance, give it a whiff, and mm. I will pour this wax. It smells so yummy. Okay, now we will check our temperature and make sure that we're at 150 degrees, which is the recommended pouring temperature for this wax. Mm -hmm. And now we're gonna add in our fragrance. So let's add in one ounce of fragrance oil. Um, you'll notice that we're using a scale for this when you're making candles, everything is done by weight. So yeah, you wanna measure your fragrance, your wax, and any other additives as well, just to make sure that you're being as accurate as possible, okay? Amazing, I'm gonna take the thermometer out and let's stir this bad boy up. So uh, that smells amazing. <laughs> it really does. Today we're using orange blossom and fig, so this fragrance is very true to an orange blossom, but you mm -hmm. get that green of a fig in the background. Um, it's just really fresh, beautiful floral citrus. Um, I love this fragrance. So we're gonna stir for one to two minutes, and when we're done, we're gonna get ready to pour this candle. When I pour, I'm gonna pour up to just below the surface of the bottom of our mold here, and then I'm gonna let the candle sit for about 20 to 30 minutes to semi-solidify. These pillar waxes cool relatively quick, especially because we're only at 150 degrees Fahrenheit now. So when we get to a slightly cooled temperature, I'm gonna go ahead and again, pull this wick down and then I'm gonna do a top pour to seal in the bottom of my sustainer. So let's pour. I'll do the honors. That smells so good. <laughs> oh 
Okay, so we're gonna let this cool and we will be back in 20 minutes to finish it off. Okay, we're back. The candle has semi-solidified and now I'm going to lift it up. I'm going to pull this wick down so that it's right below the surface. And Scylla, do the honors. Let's pour off the bottom of this candle. Ooh. Beautiful, Perfect. okay. Now we're gonna let this candle fully cool um, and we'll be back to unmold it in a bit. So now we're gonna be demolding the candle. For my experience, I think the best tip that I can recommend is in case you have jewelry on, um, make sure it's off when you're demolding it because it will scratch your candle. <laughs> it's just tend to happen. Um, also, if you have any acrylic nails, maybe wear gloves. Um, but always try to have your candle with no scratches just for presentation and yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So you saw how easy that was. We now have this beautiful pillar candle that we created. Thank you for watching and we hope we inspired you to create your own pillar candles now. So watch the rest of our videos on how to make pillar candles for tips on how to find the right wick, which waxes to use, all sorts of things to set you up for successful making. Be sure to subscribe to our channel to stay in the know on all the latest makers tips and tricks. Now, go, go make, make it happen. happen.